The issue of future intelligence collection is a hot topic at the moment. Um, at the end of September, the head of the British Secret Intelligence Service, better, better known as MI6, Alex Younger, gave an address in Washington in which he revealed that the service was about to recruit 40% more officers and that these officers were part of the uh, necessary response to the challenges of the digital revolution. Now, this digital revolution is something that we're following very closely in Jane's intelligence review uh, and how that intersects with the, the future requirements for intelligence collection by both human uh, and signals intelligence collection agencies. It's a very salient issue at the moment. As we know, criminals, uh, militants, extremists, terrorists have all migrated to the dark part of the web, accessible by browsers such as Tor, uh, and there they transact all sorts of business, uh, criminal enterprise, and they use encrypted uh, communications as well. So there's a whole range of activity that's already taking place on the dark web, uh, and a lot of this is now um, difficult to access for SIGINT agencies because of the revelations of former NSA contractor Edward Snowden. Um, Snowden, as we all know, back in 2013 revealed details of mass data collection uh, programs by the NSA and by the British GCHQ. Uh, and as a result, that's made it difficult for these agencies uh, often to operate. Now, they're also handicapped by the fact that their foes, who are these criminals and militants, terrorists operating online, um, are very well aware of the steps that they need to take for their operational security. And so they will deploy all sorts of different methods, such as the Tails operating system, Tor, virtual keyboards and so on, to keep themselves anonymous and to keep their communications safe online. And some terrorists as well will also use their own uh, bespoke software that they've created themselves because they simply don't have any trust in, uh, in, in off-the-shelf software which they think could have backdoors in it that could be exploited. At Jane's Intelligence Review, we've decided to launch an occasional series of articles then on the future of intelligence collection uh, and the challenges that the digital revolution will pose to, to agencies working in this area. So, for example, the first article that we did was on the UK Investigatory Powers Bill, uh, which has been introduced and is due to come into statute presumably in 2017. Um, this is a bill which obviously takes into account the intrinsic tension between privacy and surveillance, which is informing a lot of this debate. Um, and it comes about again in part uh, as a response to the Snowden revelations because of the emergence of a large number of dark spaces online, uh, which intelligence agencies are finding increasingly difficult to, to, to cover. So the first article in this series considered those, uh, online, sp those online dark spaces uh, and also how the IPB will come into play and the balance that it will give between privacy and surveillance. Uh, clearly a very topical debate and there are a couple of aspects of that such as encryption and bulk metadata collection which are particularly controversial. Um, the second in the series we did was on quantum cryptography. Now this is an interesting area, it's an experimental area at the moment, but essentially what quantum cryptography means is that we could reach a state in the not too distant future where communications are genuinely unbreakable, undecryptable. Now at the moment with sufficient time and resources, uh, advanced SIGINS agencies have the chance to, to break a lot of uh, codes. Um, and quantum computing could also be used to, to speed that process up as well. But on the downside for the agencies, it also means that some communications could become undecipherable in the future, and that would obviously have uh, severe implications for the allocation of resources. It could mean, for example, that humans became, again, more relevant in the future. And then there's a whole series of other topics that we want to consider in the future as well. One of these is, and I think we've alluded to it already, it's the, it's the sort of breakdown in the delimitations, the traditional delimitations between things such as signals intelligence, human intelligence, open source intelligence, and the new kid on the block, which is social media intelligence, known as SOCMINT. Now, in the digital revolution, a lot of these all come together and they all have implications for each other, uh, as Junger alluded to. And basically, this means that you potentially we'll have a future in which all of these disciplines begin to merge somewhat. Uh, and instead of having separate agencies concentrating on each particular discipline, you could have threat-led teams who identify a particular threat and then assemble the experts necessary 
from the intelligence disciplines to meet the challenge of that particular threat. So that's one particular evolution. Um, another evolution as well is that as more threats are becoming transnational in nature, you could also begin to see a blurring between the domestic security service and the foreign intelligence service in various countries where those two services exist uh, and much greater cooperation between personnel from, from those two services. So taken all together, what we're positing is the potential for, rather like you have now fusion centres which bring, bring together representatives from, for example, customs, intelligence, police to work on a common threat, a sort of mega fusion centre which would effectively be a very large agency encompassing SIGINT, HUMINT and external function and internal function all brought together in one agency. In Russia they're already talking about the possibility of creating a mega agency under the FSB, the Internal Security Service. Um, this is likely to be driven more for political reasons than pragmatic reasons, but I do think it is an indicator that in the future the, the sort of silos in which people worked are going to start to, to dissolve somewhat. In the next five to ten years there are going to be profound changes in the way that the digital revolution is affecting the way that intelligence agencies work, uh, and at Jane's Intelligence Review we aim to be covering those developments.